Major ideas in Sufi metaphysics have surrounded the concept of wada wh meaning unity or in Arabic twid tafid. Two main Sufi philosophies prevail on this topic. Wadat al-Wujud literally means the unity of existence or unity of being, but better translation would be monotheism of existence. Wujud i.e. existence here refers to Allah's wujud, implication is wadat, tawheed of wujud of Allah. On the other hand, wadat ash shuhud, meaning apparentism, or monotheism of witness, holds that God and his creation are entirely separate. Some Islamic reformers have claimed that the difference between the two philosophies differ only in semantics and that the entire debate is merely a collection of verbal controversies, which have come about because of ambiguous language. However, the concept of the relationship between God and the universe is still actively debated both among Sufis and between Sufis and non-Sufi Muslims. Topic: Wadat al-Wujud, Unity of Existence. The philosophy of Wadat al-Wujud was first ever prevailed by Hussein ibn Ali in his book Mirat al-Arifin, which he wrote in response to the question of his son Zayn al-Abidin about the explanation of Surah al-Fatiha. In this book, he interpreted the ideology of Wadat al-Wujud for the first time in the most comprehensive way. After that, the mystical thinker and theologian Abu Sayyid Mubarak Makhzomi discussed this concept in his book called Tofa Mursala. An Andalusian Sufi Saint Ibn Sabin is also known to employ this term in his writings. But the Sufi Saint who is most characterized in discussing the ideology of Sufi metaphysics in deepest details is Ibn Arabi. He employs the term wujud to refer to God as the necessary being. He also attributes the term to everything other than God, but he insists that wujud does not belong to the things found in the cosmos in any real sense. Rather, the things borrow wujud from God, much as the earth borrows light from the sun. The issue is how wujud can rightfully be attributed to the things, also called entities. Ayan. From the perspective of Tanzi, Ibn Arabi declares that wujud belongs to God alone, and, in his famous phrase, the things have never smelt a whiff of wujud. From the point of view of Tashbi, he affirms that all things are wujud self-disclosure or self-manifestation In sum, all things are he, not he. Hawa, lahawa, which is to say that they are both God and other than God, both wujud and other than wujud. In his book Fasis al-Hikam, Ibn i Arabi states that, Wujud is the unknowable and inaccessible ground of everything that exists. God alone is true Wujud, while all things dwell in non-existence, so also Wujud alone is non-delimited while everything else is constrained, confined, and constricted. Wujud is the absolute, infinite, non-delimited reality of God, while all others remain relative, finite, and delimited. Ibn Arabi's doctrine of Wadat al-Wujud focuses on the esoteric batin reality of creatures instead of exoteric zahir dimension of reality. Therefore he interprets that Wujud is one and unique reality from which all reality derives. The external world of sensible objects is but a fleeting shadow of the real al God. God alone is the all-embracing and eternal reality. Whatever exists is the shadow of the real and is not independent of God. This is summed up in Ibn Arabi's own words. Glory to him who created all things, being himself their very essence Ainuha. To call wujud or real being. One is to speak of the unity of the essence. In other terms, it is to say that being light in itself is non-delimited, mutlak, that is, infinite and absolute, undefined and indefinable, indistinct and indistinguishable. In contrast, everything other than being, every existent thing, is distinct, defined, and limited, makayad. 
The real is incomparable and transcendent, but it discloses itself tajali in all things, so it is also similar and immanent. It possesses such utter non-delimitation that it is not delimited by non-delimitation. God possesses non-delimited being, but no delimitation prevents him from delimitation. On the contrary, he possesses all delimitations, so he is non-delimited delimitation. On the highest level, wujud is the absolute and non-delimited reality of God, the necessary being. Wajib al wujud that cannot not exist. In this sense, wujud designates the essence of God or of the real dar al haq the only reality that is real in every respect. On lower levels, wujud is the underlying substance of everything other than God, masiwala, which is how Ibn Arabi and others define the cosmos or universe al alam. Hence, in a secondary meaning, the term wujud is used as shorthand to refer to the whole cosmos, to everything that exists. It can also be employed to refer to the existence of each and everything that is found in the universe. God's names or attributes, on the other hand, are the relationships which can be discerned between the essence and the cosmos. They are known to God because he knows every object of knowledge, but they are not existent entities or ontological qualities, for this would imply plurality in the Godhead. Ibn Arabi used the term effusion fade to denote the act of creation. His writings contain expressions which show different stages of creation, a distinction merely logical and not actual. The following gives details about his vision of creation in three stages, the most holy effusion al al the holy effusion al al and the perpetual effusion al al Wadat al-Wajid spread through the teachings of the Sufis like Kuniawi, Jandi, Tilimzani, Qayshari, Jaimi etc. The noted scholar Mahibullah Allahabadi strongly supported the doctrine. Sakal Samist and Bulla Shah, two Sufi poets from India, were also ardent followers of Wadat al-Wajid. It is also associated with the Hammerast Persian meaning, he is the only one. Philosophy in South Asia. Tashkik Tashkik or gradation is closely associated with Sadrian interpretation of Wadat al Wujud. According to this school, the reality and existence are identical, which means existence is one but graded in intensity. This methodology was given a name of Tashkik al Wujud, and it thus explains that there is gradation of existence that stand in a vast hierarchical chain of being al -wujid from floor farsh to divine throne, arsh, but the Wujud of each existent Mahiya is nothing but a grade of the single reality of Wujud whose source is God, the Absolute Being. Al -wujid al -mutlak. What differentiates the wujud of different existence is nothing but wujud in different degrees of strength and weakness. The universe is nothing but different degrees of strengths and weaknesses of wujud, ranging from intense degree of wujud of archangelic realities, to the dim wujud of lowly dust from which Adam was made. <laughs> Criticism of the concept Sufi metaphysics has been a subject to criticism by most non-Sufis, in Al-Andalus, where most of the Muslim scholars were either Zahirites or Malikites preferring the Asharite creed, Sufi metaphysics was considered blasphemy and its practitioners blacklisted. Followers of the Asharite creed in the East were often suspicious of Sufism as well, most often citing Sufi metaphysics as well. However, it is important to note that Ibn Arabi was influenced by al-Ghazali, who himself was a strong supporter of the Asharite creed. Topic: <coughs> <coughs> Criticism from within Sufism. Some Sufis, such as Ahmad Sirhindi, have criticized Wadat al-Wujud. Ahmad Sirhindi wrote about the sayings that universe has no existence of its own and is a shadow of the existence of the necessary being. 
He also wrote that one should discern the existence of universe from the absolute and that the absolute does not exist because of existence but because of his essence. Topic: <laughs> Response to criticism. PIR Mehar Ali Shah and Syed Wahid Ashraf have counted that the two concepts differ in that Wadat al Wujud states that God and the universe aren't identical. They hold real existence to be for God only and the universe to have no existence on its own. <laughs> Wadat ash Shuhud Wadat ash shuhud or Wadat al shuhud, Wadat al shuhud, or Wadat al shuhud has often been translated into English as apparentism. In Arabic, it literally means unity of witness, unity of perception, unity of appearance, or oneness of manifestation. Out of those who opposed the doctrine of Wadat al-Wujid, there were those who substituted the pole of subject for the object, formulating the doctrine of Wadat ash-Shuhud. This school was formulated by al ad Simnani, was to attract many followers in India, including Ahmed Sir Hindi who provided some of the most widely accepted formulations of this doctrine in the Indian subcontinent. According to Ahmed Sir Hindi's doctrine, any experience of unity between God and the created world is purely subjective and occurs only in the mind of the believer, it has no objective counterpart in the real world. The former position, Sheikh Ahmed felt, led to pantheism, which was contrary to the tenets of Sunni Islam. He held that God and creation are not identical, rather, the latter is a shadow or reflection of the divine's name and attributes when they are reflected in the mirrors of their opposite non-beings Adam al-Matakabila, Abu Hafs Umar al sarawadi and Abd al-Karim Jili were also proponents of apparentism. Topic: Al Wujud Al Munbasit, Self Unfolding Being. Shah Wali al Adelawi tried to reconcile the two apparently contradictory doctrines of Wadat Al Wujud, Unity of Being, of Ibn Arabi, and Wadat Ash Shuhud, Unity in Conscience, of Sheikh Ahmad Sir Hindi. Shah Wali Allah neatly resolved the conflict, calling these differences verbal controversies which have come about because of ambiguous language. If we leave, he says, all the metaphors and similes used for the expression of ideas aside, the apparently opposite views of the two metaphysicians will agree. The positive result of Shah Wali Allah's reconciliatory efforts was twofold, it brought about harmony between the two opposing groups of metaphysicians, and it also legitimized the doctrine of Wadat al-Wujid among the Mutakalimun, theologians, who previously had not been ready to accept it. In his books Lamahat and Satarat, he discusses stages of being, the perceptive faculty, the relation of the abstract with the universe, the universal soul and the souls of man, after death, essence, miracles, the scope of man, the soul of the perfect, universal order, source of manifestation, and the transformation of mystics from quality to quality. He also demonstrated that the long-standing assumption that Sufi doctrine was divided between apparentism and unity of being was a difference of expression alone, the latter doctrine being seen as merely a less advanced stage of projection. In his opinion this whole universe has also self NAFS as an individual person has a self, which is called the universal soul an NAFS al The multiplicity of the whole universe has originated from it. When Ibn Arabi says that everything is God, he thereby means the universal soul. This universal soul, or the self-unfolding being al al subsists by itself. This existence pervades the whole universe, both the substance and the accident, and accepts the form of everything. It is both immanent and transcendental. Beyond this existence, al wujud al munbasit universal soul, towards the original existence, God, none has access to. In other words, man's progress ends with the universal soul or the self-unfolding being. He cannot move a step further. 
The universal soul and God are so intermingled that the former is often taken for the latter. As for the question of the relation that this existence al al has with the essence of God itself. This relation is, however, known only in its reality anya, ines, its quality is unknown and can never be known. Thus when Ibn Arabi says that the realities of the existing things are the names and the attributes of the universal soul self-unfolding being in the stage of knowledge for martabat al-ilm, in the divine consciousness or when Imam Rabani asserts that the realities of existing objects are sheer nothingness on which the lights of the names and attributes of the universal soul al al are reflected is exactly the same thing. The difference in their language is so little that it needs no consideration. Wadat <inaudible> al-Maqsud <inaudible> Sultan Bahu first introduced the concept of Wadat al-Maqsud, the intention of unity or the necessity of unity. Sultan Bahu did not sufficiently elaborate on this idea focusing his interest and attention towards the concept of fan fi la, bark billa annihilation in God, lasting with God. He was the only Sufi scholar to establish the concept of lasting forever with Allah by ceasing, or annihilating one's self in Allah. <laughs> See also